Do you want to have more impact in your games? Maybe you're missing some plays you could be doing with your specific agent. Wish you could show your friends some of these neat tricks? Well, I'd love to share with you some common tips and tricks for a variety of agents that I see in high-ranked games. Some of these are actually quite simple, but if you aren't implementing all of these in your gameplay, make sure to start trying them out. In reality, it's most likely one or several of these skills you might be lacking that we're about to cover. Hello fellow gamers, my name is Dan, and today I'm excited to share with you some secret plays that you might be missing in your gameplay to give you a competitive edge in your ranked games. If you guys enjoy this type of content, please comment down below which tip helped you the most. Before we dive straight in, as always, we have our question of the day. What do you guys feel like you want to see next in Valorant? Personally, I think my main concern with the game is the lack of maps that are available to play. I would like to see a faster pace of map release over agent release, as it can get stale playing on the same maps for a long period of time. Maybe you guys want to see a specific skin get released. Well, either way, let us know what your thoughts are. As an Omen lover myself, the number one tip I can pass on is to use your blind pretty much every round. Because he's such a low-cost agent, you can afford to rip that ability every round. Additionally, it is the single best CC utility in the game that can't be destroyed or turned on. Look for spots where you can blind down lanes or enclosed spaces. Besides that, I want to highlight how effective this blind can be while coupling it with his teleport. Usually, Omen's teleport is fairly difficult to use aggressively without getting spotted by the enemy and killed for free. But if you use your blind first, you can often teleport behind or above them for some easy cheeky kills. Bonus points if you can start by conditioning your opponents with regular blinds into wide swing peaks, then transitioning to the blind slash teleport technique that I mentioned. Just this tip alone helped me net way more kills and gave me the confidence to start using his blind as much as possible. There aren't many things in Valorant more annoying than Killjoy's turret. Obviously, using it to cover flanks or spot enemies is great, but I think her turret is especially great if it can force enemies to have to stop and shoot it before entering an area. There are certain spots that can be used as a head glitch for her turret, which make it that much more annoying to deal with. The spots that I find that this works best on are usually on Ascent B site and Bind B site. Now enemies have to peek for a prolonged time to shoot your turret, and because only a portion of the hitbox is showing, it takes extra spray control and precision to deal with it. Couple this with a well-timed peek, and it can spell disaster for the enemy. We all know how strong Cypher's cages are on Split, and this is only further understood when you can implement them in a one-way fashion. Previously, Cypher had the ability to one-way cage in a lot of spots that no longer work. However, there are still a few that work, and I think the one on Split is the easiest and most effective one of them all. Pretty much, you tuck yourself into the wall that's facing towards B main. Look up and try to aim at the ridge above that is between the door frame and the lined portion of the door. Couple this with a high cam that sees into B main, and you have a setup that is strong without his trip wires. Now you can put those trips on site and help out other portions of the map with them. I know a lot of people are well aware of this cage, but I think it's important to cover anyway. Ascent is the only other map besides Split where, in my opinion, his one-way cage is also applicable. In this case, Cypher actually has one-way cages on both A and B sites, which is totally absurd. Let me show you the lineups that I like to use and see if they work for you. Starting off on B site, you want to tuck yourself into the corner of the wall right outside of Market. I like to aim at the boulder floating in the sky where the dark shadow portion juts out a little. This is what works for me from trial and error, but feel free to try and find your own lineup for this too. Now, moving on to A site. His one-way cage doesn't actually cover the entire entrance, so you have to pick which side you want to rely on. Typically speaking, I like to have it for the right side as I notice more players like to funnel out from there, hug the wall, and try to close the door. Killjoy's ultimate is clearly one of the stronger ultimates in the game. Its ability to clear an entire area of the map is immensely powerful and can offer some unique possibilities with it. However, I want to specifically highlight its potential to clear all of B site on Ascent. If you can get early B main control and place it to the left of the box where the orb spawns, you can cover every part of B site except market and spawn. The trick is to stay passive until the time of the ult reaches between 5 to 8 seconds left. I see too many people peek before the timers tick down so the enemy players are comfortable getting a quick kill and still being able to escape the ultimate stun radius. With that out of the way, this ultimate alone will at the very least give you control of the site which puts a lot of pressure on the enemy team to quickly respond. With some smokes or other utility, the bomb plant should be completely free of one ability and now you have plenty of the other utility to help defend bomb or make another play. Jet's ability to use the operator is indisputably the best. She can obviously use it aggressively to peek or hold early angles to secure early picks. 
Having a dash allows her to play angles that would never work for other agents, which is great. But today, I want to highlight the updraft spots that I see great jets use to help secure bomb plants or play post plant. Let's talk about Haven A and C specifically, as I feel like these are the ones that provide a ton of value regardless of what rank you're currently in. On A long, by updrafting on the box, you can give your team more comfort to push up the site as you hold the angle. Once the bomb is down, any enemies looking to retake the site from heaven will have to deal with you on this box. This is so strong as any enemies that smoke off A long won't be able to smoke you off because of the height advantage. You will clearly see them over the smoke and it will catch people off guard. On the other hand, let's quickly look at the same concept up C long. If you post on the long angle and walk your teammates up, once you guys secure sight, jumping up on this box here will allow for a great sight line for players coming out of CT spawn. You are also in a great position to smoke off garage for your team, and if you still have your dash up, you can have no worry of getting killed for free. Jet smokes are great like any other smokes, but its main advantage is how on the fly you can use them. There's no other character that can make one-way smokes as fast as she can, and if you learn a few of them, you can start pressuring the enemy team quite a bit on both the offensive and defensive side. In split mid, you can easily one-way smoke the ropes entrance to give your team free roam to go up to be heaven. Anyone who decides to peek from ropes will have to deal with a disadvantageous fight because you will see their feet way earlier than they can see you. The amount of times I've played ropes on the defender side and been one way smoked off is very annoying. It usually forces that player to not contest, and they often rotate through CT spawn instead of challenging it. Cypher's ability to lurk is something I've covered in other videos, and it's a tactic I like to mention to all players looking to step up their Cypher game. The easiest way to understand this is on Haven A main with his cage. If you cage A main every round off the start, now you can condition the enemy team to have to deal with a potential lurk. This can buy your team time to stall rotates and also allow you the option to lurk once in a while without making it bluntly obvious. Couple this cage with either a cam down A sewers or A long and you have created a ton of pressure on the enemy players near A site. Doing cages like this on every map is a telltale sign that the Cypher player is knowledgeable of their agent. Make sure you're doing the same. We already covered how great his blind is and how it can be used with his teleport for some interesting plays. Now let's talk about some plays you can do on split with his blind that can net you some early picks or secure your team some great information. Off the start of the round, if you have someone push either A or B main with your omen blind, you can usually get a free kill and fall off or you won't spot anyone and can now rotate off to help other parts of the map. This information alone is great as players especially on split will usually bunch up on the attack side. I see far too many omen players save their blind to deal with pushes, but see what you can do with them proactively to obtain some early advantages. Sova's ability to utilize his recon dart in conjunction with the Odin is madness. Once I started using the Odin on Haven and Ascent, I've been able to start winning way more games. The spots to keep this in mind are in Haven Garage and Ascent B site. If you mark the spots the enemies can peek off spawn, by wall banging those spots, you provide a lot of pressure on the enemy team. Players are scared to pressure the area of the map you are playing, and it can help your team play with more comfort. I can't tell you how many times I've secured free kills doing this, and the Odin is a great weapon regardless. It may take some time to learn, but if you aren't using the Odin with Sova already, try it out and it will shock you. Shock darts are great at breaking trips, dealing chip damage, and clearing angles. However, I think that learning double shock darts for plant spots is the cherry on top. This technique is easiest to utilize on Haven A and C site, as the lineups are quick and easy. I don't want to go over it today in this video, but look to watch Sinatra's Haven Sova guide if you want to learn how to specifically do this. You can also head over to our website at ProGuys.com where you can chat with any of our on-demand coaches. They are great and can push your gameplay to the next level. Be sure to check them out and give them some love. The one utility that I see many Phoenix players struggle with is learning how to utilize their wall. The best way to use it besides cutting off choke points is by splitting up part of the site with it. Now you cut off vision for the enemy team and allow your team more space to push up onto site. You can also flash through your wall, which will often catch enemies by surprise. Overall, his wall is great, and with Sage out of the meta, try using his wall to help your teammates instead of just self-healing with it. Let's keep it simple. Flashing around walls and terrain is great, but if you can flash over them, it's even better. The reason behind this is it can often cover more areas and it's harder to react to. So if you can mix up your flashes from over boxes and around boxes, you can really throw your enemies for a loop. One of my favorite spots to flash like this is on Haven A Short. Flashing over this box can be quite annoying and it will cover both the deep corners that players love to play in. 
Learning this Reina technique will make her this much harder for the enemy team to deal with. When you obtain two or more kills with her, make sure you heal first, then you use Dismiss. This way you still gain the health regeneration while being invulnerable. I see far too many Reinas panic press their E key to Dismiss when they've killed multiple players. However, usually you have enough time to heal and then cancel it into your Dismiss. This is a neat trick when pulled off, and it's gotten me out of a lot of sticky situations while having full HP. See if you can pull this off, as it's one of the harder techniques that we've covered so far. Instead of using your camera somewhere on B site, sometimes you can shift it towards mid. This is especially useful if you notice the enemy team is pressuring mid very often and are getting away with it. If you trip B main and place your camera in the corner by the mid box, you can peek off of it and can secure some kills. Enemies will have to hard clear this and often they won't be ready to deal with play. It is a great mix up if you also have other players be heaven with you that are ready to peek off your camera. With Sage out of the meta, this is a great way to deal with the mid aggression that a lot of players have a hard time dealing with now. There are a lot of neat tips and tricks that we covered today. You might already know some of them and others you might not, but either way, these are great to learn or relearn. If you like these types of videos, then please let us know and we're happy to do more. Also, feel free to tell us any tips or tricks that you feel are secretly OP. We'd love to learn more too. Well, that's all we have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to hit the bell notification to ensure that you stay up to date with our videos and ahead of the competition. If you want further help, feel free to check out our website, proguides.com, for the best on-demand coaching Coaching. Our coaches are among the very best and we hope you check them out if you enjoyed this video. And if that's not your style, make sure you check out our Discord. We have a great community where you can chat, hang out, and possibly find friends to play with. We hope to see you all in the future videos and stay healthy, Pro Guides fam.